What? <laughs> Hello humans, this is Charlie Ari, and this week I'm bringing you something a bit different, a bit more chill. We're going to do some poetry today. It doesn't have to be for anyone who regularly writes poetry, you can just be giving it a try. I'm doing this because my writing dropped off completely, basically, over, over the past year. Um, I've tried, I've done uh, plans for writing, but when it comes to actually sitting down and doing it on the regular, it's not happened. And now I've started a new job, uh, which I'm super excited about. I want to be able to have both this job and also like my creative life outside of it. I've been so tired. I've been so tired. Oh, oh dear. Uh, new jobs are tiring. Especially when you're not used to doing eight hour shifts. So it's important for me to, to get creative again properly in writing form because I have done crafty things across this year. Um, probably that have been a bit easier for me um, and learning something new motivates me anyway. So I'm hoping this will just be a nice chilled session where I feel really positive at the end of it and I'll be like, yes, I still have a little bit of, bit of poetry in me and I hope you can do the same, especially if you've been in, in a rut like I have. I'm gonna just kind of wing it. So it's gonna be like a mini workshop. I'm just gonna do two exercises, uh, one as a kind of warm up, and then something working from that. So the first exercise is going to be a bit of automatic writing and Automatic writing is basically you literally put your pen to paper and you write whatever word comes to your head. Genuinely, whatever. It's kind of a practice in being non judgmental of your brain. <laughs> uh, so, for example, one line that sticks with me that I wrote in. Uh, it's not the best line, but it's just the starting line that somehow fell out of my brain, which was great gravy signs for hats, which means nothing. Um, but just it just kind of shows you that you really don't have to write anything in particular. You can even go, I don't know what I want to write. I don't know what I want to write. And then something might come out of it. Um, it can also be helpful to start with just a letter of the alphabet as well, just to get you going. Um, I think that's probably where Great Gravy Sign for Hats came from. Personally for me, I'm quite the advocate of automatic writing when I'm in a rut and just to kind of get me started when I'm writing. It's great to kind of let you know what's blocking your brain. So if there is something that has been troubling you, and that's kind of stopped you being creative, you will definitely, well, I can't guarantee, but I definitely find out in that time of automatic writing, and I've seen it happen in other people as well, where things that can even have been buried for a, like quite a long time just sort of fall out of their brain when they're doing automatic writing, because it's just this moment to be completely unfiltered with yourself. Um, I'm going to share my automatic writing with you. It's not something that you should share at all if you don't want to, um, but I want to kind of just show you how mad and disjointed it can be and if you just really embrace that. Yeah, I, I just want to show you what happens when you just try and put your brain on paper and it's messy and crazy and sometimes you will find a couple of phrases that you like. I'm gonna do it for five minutes, absolutely zero pressure. Let's just let our brains fall out onto the page. If you are unsure as well, if you don't really know, you can just skip a little ahead and just listen to what I came out with and then come back and do the five minutes just depending on your confidence level, that might help out. Um, obviously everyone's brains are different and it can take a while to get like, comfortable with just letting yourself go in that way. So you might even find after the five minutes that actually 
you'd like to do a few more minutes and that's totally fine it's just up to you uh really this is your your writing your time and do with it what you will so if you really don't know where to start i'm going to give you the letter j to start with so just think of j think of a word that starts with j or even something that sounds like j and go with it okay um so i'm going to start the timer now So I kind of want to write some more, but I'm gonna go with what I have. I actually, I actually didn't have anything getting in the way of my brain, um, which I'm kind of, I don't know, surprised at. Maybe I've just been so, so busy that I've kind of emptied my brain. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm quite happy with what I came out with, I guess. There's some interesting images, very loosely building some kind of narrative, I guess. But yeah, I will just read it to you. Juniper burying the steeples of men who crackle under her thumb like fireworks, or a beetle, she is sadistic, this space-born child who hungers for land in a time beyond the Pyrenees, and she needs to wear her gravy like a master who splish splashes amongst her daisies in her powerful herbiness. Childless wandering the mangrove and plucking oranges out of the water, bloated, saturated in its own juices and murky water, muddy waters, is a child man, a full-grown lover man who wields a machete like a tooth pasting the terrible sky with its chemical abrasion. We wash our children with that it reaches for the mangrove a lecherous father of guilt who suppresses each orange underfoot drowning them in the sandy mud they are whole so for the next part of the exercise we're going to pick out the phrases and lines and ideas that we like so the first one is the steeples of men which i I just quite like that image, the steeples of men, the way religion has kind of ruled the world for so many hundreds of years and it's all been under the thumb of men. Um, powerful herbiness, it's, I've got a wiggly line, I'm not sure if I actually like that phrase, but I like the idea of like herbs being powerful uh, versions of flowers. Um, so that might have something to work with there. Obviously I started with Juniper, because we started with J. Um, but yeah, I like that general idea, but not the actual word. Um, we now have, uh, I like the, I, the image of a mangrove. Um, if you don't know what a mangrove is, it's like in kind of forests, not forests, uh, it's kind of tropical uh, places where trees, um, and plants grow out of water, so they are like fully saturated in water and you basically walk through puddles um, permanently. Um, and I kind of like this idea of oranges in there. I don't even, <laughs> not even sure if an orange tree can actually grow in a mangrove, but this idea of these sort of oranges floating around a mangrove, this kind of dark, foresty, naturey kind of place that isn't very habitable. Um, for humans anyway, and the idea of oranges being bloated. I quite like the idea of a bloated orange because it already is kind of bloated in its own juice, but I kind of want to make that image more visceral and kind of disgusting. Um, so yeah, I kind of like that and I quite, as also you can kind of tell where I'm just plucking random stuff. So I use like <laughs> wearing her gravy um, and I talked about mud and I thought of muddy waters and then I just added one of the lyrics um, from his song, his very famous song, Full Grown Lover Man. 
Um, and yeah, so you can see I kind of drift off in certain places and that's totally fine. And you can just keep writing whatever your brain is writing and just steal words from other people if that is what's in your brain at the time. So just kind of to let you know what's going on there. Um, I also seem to like adding ing, so I, I think I thought like toothbrush at first, holding a machete like a toothbrush, but I also thought I didn't quite like that at the time, so then I thought of toothpaste, toothpaste was the real word in my mind at the time, and then I wrote toothpasting to kind of, I don't know, I think it helps me sort of carry on to another word. I don't know if I'm rambling now. <laughs> uh, but yes, and the last bit I really like is the sort of suppressing an orange under the foot in the mangrove and pushing them down into the mud. Um, and also just the last line, they are whole. It's almost like an image of hope, even though these sort of bloated oranges have been pushed into the mud, they've been buried, like they are still whole, they are still holding all of their innards and their juices, which I want to describe as kind of disgusting earlier, but kind of hopefully later. I hope this has given you a kind of idea of how kind of all over the place it can be. Um, sometimes it's really difficult just to get anything out of um, automatic writing, and I think for when that happens you just need to write for longer. So if you feel like you've started and you're like, mm, I don't really feel like I have anything, Maybe just go back, pick out a word maybe that you like from it, start with that word and just write for a few more minutes before coming to this next section. And we're going to put them on a separate page, like rewrite them out. And if there's something that you're a bit unsure about or that you'd like to know more about, just do a little bit of research. So here I did some research on mangroves because honestly I don't know that much about them. Um, this I just sort of idea sort of rolled out of my head and I'd like to know more about them. So I did some digging and found a bunch of information that I could potentially apply to my poem. Okay, as you can see, I wrote out the steeples of men, mangroves, orange mangrove tree, pig face. Um, I'm also probably going to write out bloated and drowning and all that kind of stuff, these sort of images that I like. I sort of did a bunch of research into mangroves, so it's low oxygen soil, so I can sort of add that into the sort of drowning aspect. Um, they're also really good for soaking up CO2 from the air, better than most rainforests and things like that. They're by the coast, so I've got all these new kind of images to work with. Orange trees definitely do not grow. Mangroves have very special trees suited to them specifically. They have these big uh, roots that are on stilts kind of, and they can sort of, they're able to handle the tides coming in and out basically. Um, they're also great nurseries and protection for fish and shellfish. So there might be something about that if I want to evoke Images of innocence or protection, I might work with this sort of idea of a nursery hidden within. Um, also, a lot of them have buttress roots, which kind of helps stabilise them. Um, and I just like the word buttress. It's just a good, strong word. Um, I was looking up, I looked up orange mangrove, and there is a tree called the orange mangrove. Definitely not an orange tree, uh, but it has these nice... Uh, waxy leaves, it has these sort of red spiky cup flowers that have this sort of green cigar shaped kind of fruit popping out of it. You can't eat it immediately but you can eat it when it's cooked. I thought maybe they're like green fishes and apparently when the fruit drops into the water it floats vertically. So there might be some interesting images that I can get from that. Um, I was also looking just for more like edible fruit from mangroves and there's this fruit called pig face which is um, a succulent so it's probably more towards like the edges of mangroves to be honest because they're quite close to the ground and they have fruit like um, salty strawberries or figs 
um, and they actually really are really good at hydrating. Obviously, if you think about the salt in them, um, and they have these kind of bright pink daisyish sort of flowers. Um, I decided because of both of the trees here that I'm probably looking at an Australian mangrove, so that might help with some images that I create. I don't know. Um, and then I thought, okay, so if I want actual oranges in the water, maybe they've rolled off of ships, maybe they've been thrown into the water from a ship, um, or a ship has crashed or something like that. So um, I'm thinking it might be a ship with some orange cargo, which makes sense because to protect against scurvy, there are ships with lots of citrus aboard anyway. Um, but maybe I'm looking at something a bit more old, maybe a bit Victorian. I'm watching a show that's set in Victorian times on a ship at the moment, so maybe I can sort of take a little bit of inspiration from that um, and sort of mix that in with the idea of steeples of men, maybe. Maybe there's a lot of ships and it looks like steeples shooting out of the water um, next to this mangrove, which is this very natural, uninhabitable to man kind of environment. So yeah, if you just go through, obviously I've done quite a bit of research for this one. Um, it can help sometimes just for a bit of inspiration. Um, I'm definitely not going to use all this information, but it just gives me something to think about. A few extra images like green fishes and daisy faced flowers and salty strawberries and buttresses and nurseries and things like that. The next exercise is obviously going to be writing a poem with the information that you've pulled from your automatic writing. Um, you can do this however you want. I'm going to give myself 20 minutes and see what I come out with. This by no means has to be a finished poem. It does not have to be written beginning to end in a linear way. You can just sort of write little lines here and there and connect them together. It doesn't need to look pretty. Just see what kind of ideas you come out with. It might be worth even just taking, if you have very sort of separate ideas, it might be worth just taking those one at a time and just writing a little bit and seeing if a couple do connect together or maybe you just have a few little poems to hand. So yeah. I think I'm gonna work with this. Honestly, maybe there are two poems in this or two separate ideas when I'm talking about the steeples of men and then I'm thinking about this mangrove. Um, I don't know whether these two opposing things might come together nicely or whether they might jar and I basically write two poems in one. These two things might not go together, but they might make two separate things in a nice way. I'm not going to give you a terrible amount of guidance because I think you should just do what you would like with this. You don't have to rhyme. If you don't want to, you can create something very traditional. You can create something very modern and concrete. And yeah, just do what you like, do what feels right and put these words together in a nice sounding way. One more piece of advice is if you're still not sure what kind of words to use or phrases to use from your original piece. If you have a space where you can just read out loud to yourself, that would probably just help you pick out sounds that you like, because it doesn't have to necessarily make sense. You can make a nonsense poem if you like, just with these nice sounds that you've picked out from your automatic writing. And that's just something nice to do. Like there's no pressure. I think it would just be nice to just get something out of what we've written today so far. There's no pressure, we can just write whatever we want and have a bit of fun, really. See you in 20 minutes.
so the 20 minutes are up. Um, I haven't finished the poem. In fact, I feel like there is a long way to go. I'm probably a bit rusty and that is fine. Uh, so I'm going to read what I have and pick out a little bit of side like bits that I'd like to change. Um, I think there are some bits that are maybe a bit repetitive, but that's because I'm trying to figure out where I want to go. And yeah, this kind of turned out a bit of a prose poem. I don't know if it'll stay like that or whether I'm going to pick out phrases and cut it up um, and create a more poemy poem out of it. Children of fish under the mangrove in their thousands, safe amongst the salt. On the horizon, the steeples of men split open, bear their fruit, bloated, pocked and sweet, next to the slim green fishes of the mangrove indigestible. But for the pig-faced figs, salt and sour, this is no place for an orange. Impenetrable as the shellfish, the yielding abscess of mass production. The men arrive, struggle through the buttresses, the children peck their bruising legs. They shudder at the upright cigars floating among the oranges. They push fruit down into the moving mud underfoot, drowned they are whole. Holding a machete like a toothbrush, the foolish man chops at what he can. The limbs snake around him, the tide rises around his pale legs. The trees sigh on their stilts as he strains to find the steeple of his own mast. There is no map above water. So, obviously I'm not completely happy with this. There's plenty of room to edit and room to move with this. I like some of the lines that I've got in there, but for the pig-faced figs, salt and sour, this is no place for an orange. I quite like that kind of, um, I don't know, there's something poemy about it <laughs> that I can't quite put my finger on. Um, the yielding abscess of mass production, I don't like mass production in that, but I like the yielding abscess as a description of an orange compared to these, these more kind of solid fruits of the mangrove. I like struggle through the buttresses, um, the children as the fish, the children peck at their bruising legs. Um, and I want to create where I say they shudder uh, the upright cigars floating among the oranges. I think that's a great image. Um, but I also kind of want to show that those upright cigars are the fruit of the mangrove orange tree more, maybe. I don't know if that would ruin it or make it better. Tell me what you think in the comments, maybe. If there are lines also you like from this, please tell me in the comments because it could be something fun to run with. I like drowned, they are whole. I think I would quite like to use that as a motif to keep coming back to in the poem. Maybe I'm going to drown this man in the mangrove by the end of the poem. It's got a very kind of um colonial vibe so far. Um, so I think maybe I should work with that more and see where I can go with it. This kind of man who feel like, feels like he can sort of dominate the land, trying to take what he can and being sort of drowned in this sort of uninhabitable place for a man. Men have also destroyed a lot of mangroves. We don't have that many left, even though they are fantastic for the environment. I want to create more of a story about this. I think I'm going to just keep working on this for a couple of weeks. Uh, not put too much pressure on myself time-wise, but it's the start of a poem. Um, usually just when you're wandering around doing your own thing, you might come up with more ideas for a poem. So yes, I think this is a nice start. I'm happy that I did this. Uh, I hope that you have got something out of this as well. Uh, this is quite normal practice for me, um, rather than trying to do something super like 
quirky and fun exercises I thought I would show kind of just how I usually in normal times would create poems um let me know if there's anything in the poem that you like any lines that you think that I've ignored that I should work with if you have done this exercise please share what you came out out with um I don't know how how big a comment can be but if you want to share um something in the in the comments that you enjoyed even if it's just a line that you created out of this that you think is a really good line because we all love a good sounding phrase don't we no matter what it sounds like maybe i will catch you up on what i've created in later videos um from this specific poem just to kind of show where it can go and where it's come from I'm thinking maybe with this I might do a video on editing poetry um, because I am an advocate of editing. This is obviously not a finished piece. Um, I don't pressure myself to do a finished piece because I think we can sort of develop a poem across time and yeah uh, let me know if you'd be curious about seeing me edit this poem specifically um, and seeing where it goes. So yeah, thank you uh, for joining me. Enjoy your day, enjoy uh, writing more poetry if I've got you interested, and yeah, comment, subscribe, uh, do the liking and stuff, um, it's always really helpful. Also, I got uh, 50 subscribers this month, which I'm really happy about. Uh, Obviously, it's a very small goal to celebrate, but I'm quite happy with that. And yeah, um, have a nice day. Uh, I'm gonna go for a walk, I think. And I live near the sea, so maybe I'll get more ideas of salty things <laughs> to write about.